What's going on, everybody? In this video, we're going to talk about how to draw a histogram. Um, and histograms are very easy. Um, it's a nice way for us to show a graphical representation of a data set. Um, but there's a couple of different things I want you to understand about a histogram. Histograms are not bar graphs. They look just like them. But the difference is a histogram, all of my lines, all of my lines are touching. All of my boxes are touching. Um, and that allows me to make sure that all of my bars are represented by what's called intervals or mathematically, they're called bins. And all of our numbers are gonna be placed into an interval size. And this is where some people may struggle with histograms. Everyone may pick a different interval size and that's okay. Um, I try to keep them as easy as I can. I like even clean intervals. In fact, all intervals need to be even and clean. But I like to keep my intervals as even clean numbers. And I'll show you what that means in this very first example. Now, what I need though is I need first, I need a frequency table. And I'm going to show you how to create that frequency table. That frequency table involves my intervals. And then and tallies. And once I have these two things, I can then create my actual histogram. So without further ado, let's jump straight into this first example. So they want us to draw a histogram for the following data. Now, the first thing I need is I need to determine what is, what is my interval look like? Like, Obviously, I'm looking here, and if I'm looking around, it looks like 7 is going to be my smallest number, and then 71 is going to be my greatest. So I want to pick intervals that are going to be easy for me to count the numbers to see what they fall in, and I want to be able to incorporate all of these numbers. Now, I don't necessarily want to go up by twos, because if I go up by twos, which I could, that's going to be a lot of intervals, and I just don't want to do that. So if I'm going from 7 and I'm going to 71, I'm going to pick my intervals to be intervals of 10. And this is kind of where I know a lot of people get confused. I'm going to pick 10 numbers. Well, my numbers that I'm going to start with, my first interval, my first bin, are going to be the numbers between 0 and 9. Now, a lot of people are maybe already looking at this thinking 0 to 9. That is 10 numbers because I'm counting the number zero. So if I count zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, that is a grand total of 10 numbers. So what that means is my next interval is going to start with the number right after nine and go for another 10 numbers, which 10 to 19 is 10 numbers. And I'm going to follow this pattern all the way until I have um, included all of the numbers within my interval. So we have 40 to 49. I've got, uh, let me move this up just a wee bit. Um, can I scroll? I can scroll. And so then I have 50 to 59, 60 to 69, and 70 to 79. So Oops. And so within this, what I can do is I can count how many numbers I have within those intervals, and that gives me my frequency table. But I know being my lowest number being a 7 and my highest number being a 71, I've now included all of my numbers within my intervals, right? Right. So now what I want to do is I want to finish my frequency table. A frequency table tells me how many times numbers occur within a specific interval. So I'm going to go and count all of the numbers that are between 0 and 9. So 10, that's not below 0 and 9, or between 0 and 9, neither is 10, but 8 and 7, so that's 1, 2. And this is where I'm using my tally marks. So I have two numbers between 8 and zero and nine so far and then that is it so we have two numbers between zero and nine how many numbers do i have between 10 and 19 well i have one 
two, three, four, five, six. So I have one, two, three, four, five, and six. How many numbers between 20 and 29? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. What about 30 and 39? So I have one, two, three, one, two, three. 40 and 49? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. 50 and 59? One, two, three. 60 and 69? Well, we don't have any, so I can just, I can either put a zero or leave it blank. Um, we'll put a zero there for now. And then 70 and 79, I've got one. So now that I have my tally marks, I can draw my actual histogram. So my histogram, well, let's do it this way. My histogram is going to be a graph that looks like this. And let's give myself a little bit more room. And so now what I can do is down here on my x-axis, I can put my bins. Okay, so I'm going to start with right here will be 0 to 9. Then we'll have 10 to 19. Then I'll have 20 to 29. 30 to 39, 40 to 49, 50 to 59, 60 to 69, and 70 to 79. Make sure I got them all, 0 to 9, 10 to 19, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. We are good. And then on this side, on my y-axis, I want my tallies. I want my number totals, right? So we'll call this one one, two, three, four, five, six. And I always like to go one above whatever my max is. It just makes my graph look nice. And at this point, I can start graphing my histogram. Well, easy way to do this. I'm starting with my first interval. I have two tally marks, so I'm going to go to two. And go down and I'm actually touching my graph with each bar here um, I'm looking at my next interval 10 to 19 I have six so I'm gonna draw this bar just like that 20 to 29 we're also up here at six um, 30 to 39 I'm at three 40 to 49, I'm at 4. 50 to 59, we're at 3. 60 to 69, we don't have anything. 70 to 79, I'm at 1. Now, obviously with 60 to 69, I can't put a graph in there at all or a bar there just because we didn't have anything. So that's 70 to 79 is the only one that's not going to be touching the rest of the graph. I like to keep mine clean. I like to color in my bars. Um, it makes our graph look complete. And now I can ask specific questions about my histogram um, that make it very easy for me to um, use this for some mathematical content. I could say how many students or, yeah, maybe... Um, how many students scored between a 30 and a 39 on their quiz? Well, I look at my 30 to 39, and I notice that that's over here at a 3. And so I would say three students failed with a, between a 30 and 39. And we can start asking different questions like that. Another way that we could do it is, um, excuse me, uh, maybe we wanted to find the median of the graph. And so we have a couple of different ways that we can do that. Um, if I take my um, however many numbers that we have total, which um, we have one, four, I'm counting my tallies here, so I'm, I have one plus three, that's four, 
plus 4 is 8, plus 3 is 11, plus 6 is 17, plus another 6 is 23, plus 2 is 25. And if we divide that by 2, um, I get 12.5. So the 12th, roughly, maybe round to the 13th here, round the 12th and the 11th number within the data set will give me my median. Well, I'm two numbers in, and then here I'm eight numbers in, and then within this third bar here, if I added six again, that puts me at 14. So I would assume that my median would be somewhere around um, this interval of 20 to 29. And if we check backwards, it should make sense. I have one, and then here I have three, that's four. And then we have um, four here, that's eight. And then plus three is 11. And so again, that 12th or 13th number is going to fall within the range of 20 to 29. So I could estimate that my median would be within 20 to 29. So this is how we do a histogram. It's how we construct a box plot. I hope this made a lot of sense. I think that um, these are very useful and very easy for us to follow. So thanks for checking out this video. I will see you next time.